Hey everybody, I just wanted to show y'all our favorite way of cooking some uh, some tender or some backstrap or tenderloin. So uh, from a deer, it's venison. So this is our this is our backstrap. This is the uh, so this is one side of it. That's that's kind of ready to go there. This side you can see has this fibrous layer, and we're going to cut that off. And it, we're just I'm just going to do enough for the two of us. So I'll probably. I'll probably cut it about right here, and then I'll actually take that and split it into half, and those two little sections are what we'll cook. So let's go ahead and cut this fibrous layer off this side here. And to do that, I'm gonna come in from the other side, and I guess we'll, we'll cut it about there. So let's go ahead and cut down, okay? And you can see I've cut right down to that, to that outer layer, and then I'm gonna turn my knife sideways, just like you're filleting a fish. We're just gonna sort of fillet this off and hopefully we get all of it. If we don't get some of it, we'll come back and try to redo it. Okay, so you can see here, I got most of it, but I left a little bit. So let's see if we can sneak underneath this. And, and hopefully get Hopefully get it all, but at the very least get most of this old, this old tough stuff off of there. Stuff just makes for, it's hard to chew it. Oh yeah, that did fine. Okay, so very good. So this is the piece we have left. You can kind of get an idea about what size that is. Again, for, for two of us, this is going to be just right. So all I'm gonna do is now cut that in half just so it cooks a little quicker. This is gonna be really quick cooking. All right, and full disclosure here, man, I know nothing about cooking. I can't cook hardly anything, so if I can do this, anybody can. All right, so we have our two pieces, and the next order of business is we're just gonna turn the spice rack and we're gonna load them up on both sides, and then we're going to take a real hot skillet. We're gonna put some oil in it and just get it like smoking hot so you think it's about to catch on fire. And then just like searing a steak, we're gonna drop them in there, maybe 30 seconds on one side, flip them over 30 seconds on the other side, and then I'll let one side cook for about two minutes, maybe three, and I'll flip it over and let the other side cook for about one more minute. And that's it. That'll have them about medium rare, which is I think where they are the tenderest and taste the best. For starters, we have about two or three tablespoons of oil in a black iron skillet. So we'll get that cooking hot. And while that's heating up, I'll be putting all these spices on the back strap. So let me just show you what we've got here. And again, I, there's nothing special about these. It just happens to be what I have. So I'm gonna use Slappy Mamas. That, not everybody's familiar with that, but pretty much everybody's familiar with Tony's. They're very similar, so you can use either one. And then we're just gonna throw a little bit of everything. I'm gonna do, I, I love garlic. You can't get too much garlic from me. So I'm gonna use garlic powder, garlic salt, onion powder, rosemary leaves, basil, oregano. If you have anything in your spice rack that you like in addition to that, throw it on there. I don't think you can put anything on there that messes it up. So I just throw a little bit of everything. So let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and fix them up. Oh, I got a little bit heavy on that. That's okay. Again, remember, I don't know what I'm doing, so you can't really mess up, because if you could, I would have already done it. That's that. Do we have a little sifter, like the little holes, or just, yeah, take off the whole top? Do you know? Uh, which one? This one, I mean. Know. All right, so I tell you what, let's just do all of one side, then we'll flip it over and do all of another.
And all the while, our, our grease over here is getting hot. So let's flip them over and do the same routine. All right, same spices, other side. We already did the slap your mama, so. All right, so that's it. Prep time, what, about a minute? So all we're doing now is we're just gonna let this get, when it starts like kind of smoking a little bit, to me, it's just about ready. I see little smoke vapors coming off. It's getting close. We're gonna put this thing on it because it will make a mess. So about 30 seconds to sear this side. Okay, that's a little less than 30 seconds, but Turn it far down just a little bit. All right, so that's effectively a, a 30 second sear on both sides. So now we're going to let this cook for two more minutes on this side, and then we're going to flip it one minute on the other side, and it's done. And there's one last thing we're going to do. And we're going to melt some butter, a, a little uh, a little bit of a stick of butter, and put a bunch of garlic salt in it. And when we're finished, we're going to take it off and we're going to drizzle the garlic and butter, or garlic powder, garlic, butter and garlic powder over the top of them and they're ready to eat. So we're just, uh, we're just waiting out here our next uh, minute and a half, and then we'll, maybe two minutes, and then we'll flip it over for one minute on the other, back on the other side and we'll be done. And the other thing we're going to do is we cook some rice and the juice that cooks out of the meat into the oil and with the seasonings that come off the meat will we'll make a sort of a gravy that we'll put over the rice. All right, let's do it one more minute. Oh, secret ingredient for the for the uh, for the peas. Chow chow makes average peas excellent. Okay, that should be it. We'll turn our fire off. And so now for the final, for the finishing touch, we have our garlic powder mixed with butter. And we just drill for that over the top. There's no such thing as too much garlic, right? Okay, that is that. Let's cook, let's cut into one and see how it looks. If by chance it's not cooked enough, we can just throw it right back on there. So that is, and we set off the smoke alarm. All right, y'all, so we uh, set off the smoke alarms in here. And so here is, the, uh, here we cut off the end. I like it just like that. That's probably bordered somewhere between rare and medium rare. Um, my wife likes hers cooked a little more, so we just turn the fire back on. Um, we're going to put, uh, put hers back on for a, a little bit more.
maybe a little bit lower heat and cook it for another minute and a half, maybe on each side. Also, uh, it, it needed salt. Right? It, it needs a lot of salt. So um, I just went ahead and put some more Slappy Mamas on mine, and we'll see how, how hers does. But I'll probably end up just having to add a little bit as we go along. But it's looking good. And that is how you do it. Okay, so this is hers. For those of you who like yours um, a little more medium rare and on the ends maybe medium. Let's see. Yeah, so that's that's probably medium, between medium and medium rare right there, which probably is the way most people would prefer it. Mm, I mean, that's good. All right, hope y'all enjoy. It's going to be fun for us. See you next time. Y'all, I just have to show you one more thing. If you like a filet mignon, one of the finest cuts, a center cut like filet, you're gonna you're gonna love this. This is it's incredibly tender. It's texture, and this is backstrap. It's not even the tenderloin, but this is unbelievable. It's just that good. So I really hope y'all will give it a try, and I think you're gonna really love it. Okay, so there's a couple of points I'd like to, to make that make a difference, I think. One is that the deer meat was never frozen. So this was fresh and it was the back strap. Um, so the second point is uh, the deer probably soaked in, in cold water in the, in the refrigerator for a week, a week, a week and a day or two. Uh, before we cooked it. I don't know if that part makes a lot of difference, but it does help kind of pull some of the blood out. Oh, and so the other point I wanted to make is I defy anybody to be able to close their eyes and tell if that was deer meat, if that was venison or beef. You cannot tell. So, the, and the last thing I wanted to say is on the black eyed peas, we put something called chow chow. You can find it in a store, but this stuff is delicious. And my, uh, actually my daughter made this from a recipe that my grandmother used, uh, that my grandmother had. And so if anybody wants the recipe for it, uh, just drop a comment and I'll either attach the video. I think she made a video of how to make this. If so, I'll link it. If not, I'll just post the recipe or I may just do both. But anyway, chow chow is great on black eyed peas. So I hope y'all enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, especially if you try the recipe and you enjoy that, Give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and smash that like button. I'll see you on the next one. God bless you.